This video will discuss the core of the hartree fock approximation. So after all the lead up in this chapter, after 13 videos, we are finally getting to what actually is the hartree fock approximation. So thus far, we've looked at our electronic Hamiltonian. So we've already assumed the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. We're already looking at just electronic uh, energies because our nuclei are assumed to be fixed point fixed classical point particles relative to our light, fast-moving electrons. So our Hamiltonian total energy operator for the electrons is going to be a sum from i equals 1 to n over all n electrons of their kinetic energy operator, negative 1 half del squared i, del squared being the second partial derivative of each spatial dimension of each electron. So del, uh, second partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z for electron 1 in this case, then electron 2, 3, 4, etc. Minus a sum of overall electrons of their interactions with all nuclei, sum from A equals 1 to M over the M nuclei of the charge of nucleus A in terms of number of protons divided by RIA, distance apart in Bohr in atomic units. That thus far is what we would call the one electron operators. Um, because in here, each of these terms only depends on a maximum of one electron coordinates at a time. So this is what you would call a separable operator because we can factor it into something of the form sum i equals 1 to n of some one electron operators, where the one electron operator is the kinetic energy plus all of the nuclear attraction terms. And then we add that to a pairwise sum overall electrons, sum i equals 1 to n, sum j equals i plus 1 to n, of 1 over rij, the inverse of how far apart each of those two electrons in the pair are. And this, of course, simultaneously depending on the coordinates of two electrons to, de to determine this uh, distance calculation, depending on pairs of electrons at a time, is a two-electron operator which we would call non-separable because we cannot factor it into an expression of this form. And thus, it's not exactly solvable. It's what you would call a many-body problem in physics. And in order to solve it, we need to resort to approximate methods. So what we're going to do in that case in order to solve that is average over what we call a mean field of other electrons. So the Hartree-Fock approximation, you might also call the mean field approximation, because what we're going to do is split our one electron total energy operator, which we'll call the Fock operator, thus the Fock of Hartree-Fock. We already mentioned Hartree products uh, earlier in the chapter, so the, first, so the Fock operator is coming in here, where the Fock operator is a sum of the core Hamiltonian for an electron, namely its kinetic energy and attraction to all of the nuclei, plus what we call a mean field operator, represented as VHF for electron 1. So this mean field operator is going to be the magic of how we deal with the fact of its interactions of, with all other electrons having to be approximate and dealing with that, that pairwise um, problem. Okay, so in this case, what we'll get is the Fock operator acting on a particular spin orbital in our system is going to give an orbital energy times the same spin orbital. And those of you who are paying attention here would note that this is an eigenvalue problem where we have an eigenvalue of the orbital energy and an eigenfunction of our spin orbital being the eigenfunction of the Fock operator. But of course, there's a problem here. This isn't actually an eigenvalue problem because it's what we would call a pseudo eigenvalue problem. And the reason for that is, is that this mean field operator, that isn't a linear operator. It doesn't, it actually depends on what all the other orbitals are. We can't separate it into a kind of thing that only depends on this orbital because it depends on what all the other orbitals are too. So this mean field operator, is effectively what electron I feels <clears throat> as the effect of all of the other electrons. So if, if there's n electrons, it feels all the other n minus 1 of them averaged over all positions. 
So at any given point in the calculation, it doesn't know where each of the other electrons are. It just feels what each of the electrons are kind of smeared over or averaged over their total electron density, not the kind of explicit uh, pairwise interactions based off your current location in space you're integrating over. So I mentioned there that electron I interacts with n minus 1 electrons and not itself. So the consequence of this is <clears throat> this mean field operator actually depends on what all of the other spin orbitals are. And thus you can't just solve this uh, eigenvalue equation on its own because you have to simultaneously solve this for all of the electrons. And every time you solve it for one electron, its orbital changes and then all the other or orbitals change too. So it's sort of a, a nonlinear feedback loop which breaks up this eigenvalue problem into something that's much more challenging than just solving this for one electron on its own.